All right. Welcome to Women in 10. I'm Shauna Dorsey here with my co-host. Janae Lynn. And uh, we're joined by a special guest today. But before we get to introducing my fabulous friend, just want to tell you all about how this works. So it's a 10 minute max podcast. Um, we don't edit or anything. No way. Hey, don't know how to. Mm. Two, don't want to pay for it. Nope. It seems like a lot. Yeah. Um, and uh, if we have time, we'll wrap up with one of these fun date cards that you may or may not see, depending on how this shows up. Mm-hmm. So anyway, welcome. Can you tell us who you are? Hello. My name is Nancy Williams. <laughs> Wonderful. We appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you. So Nancy, can you tell us a bit about yourself, you know, whatever you want to share, like background wise, and then like what you're up to today and we'll go from there. Oh boy. Okay. (laughs) Background wise. Okay. Uh, I am the oldest of six children. I grew up in a small town in rural Louisiana. Um, I studied horticulture at LSU, plant pathology and weed science at Cornell came to Omaha to work for a crop protection chemicals company with farmers uh, and switched to IT uh, after about um, seven, eight years of that and was in IT for 14, 16 years, uh, left Boys and Girls Club as the CIO and started working as the CEO of No More Empty Pots in 2016. Uh, and it's a nonprofit that I helped found in 2010. And from 92 to 97, I gave birth to four wonderful children. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they are now adults and doing well. Two in Omaha, one in Pittsburgh, and one in St. Paul. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you. Wow. That was like the fastest background catch me up. Amazing. Yeah. Lessons yeah. learned always. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's more, but we won't get into all that. <laughs> Hopefully we will. Yeah. Baby, we ain't got time for that. <laughs> okay, okay. How did you go from like CIO uh-huh. to and I know no more empty pots was something that you founded. Tell me what uh-huh. that transition though was like going full time into a no more empty pots. It was not what I thought it would be. Yeah. When I worked uh at Boys and Girls Club, it's like I had my own shop within the organization. So I, it was very much um, organized in, I I worked in it as if it wasn't uh, like a company within a company because Tom Kunkel, my supervisor at that time, allowed me to do that. Um, and I had a lot of autonomy um, and could just go do stuff. And uh, as long as I could justify it and find the money for it, it happened. Um, But going into No More Empty Pots, I thought, because first it took me a year to transition. I told them in 2014 I was leaving. In 2015, I did a year-long plan, literally December 31st, 2015, in the afternoon, I handed Tom my keys, <laughs> hugged him, went home and slept for two days, and then went to work at No More <laughs> Empty Pots. And I thought, finally, I have time to get my checklist done. So <laughs> not right. Oh, my God. I had no idea. Yeah. No idea. There was so much that happened in 2016. Like, I literally will be writing a book about just 2016. Um, I drank so much whiskey in 2016 that 2017 people were giving me whiskey and I was like, did I talk to you about whiskey? I didn't even realize it. (laughs) And they were just gifting me whiskey in the new year, which is great. But, uh, (laughs) um, let's see. I, it's more about leadership and leadership is more about vulnerability I didn't know that I was about to rip my chest open and just walk around being vulnerable and trying to figure out how to live and unearth so many layers of trauma in things unbeknownst to me that were buried for good reason. But I figured out early on that if I wanted to lead the organization I had to be more vulnerable and to be more vulnerable, I had to figure out how to open my heart 
um, and be present. And I'm still on that journey, but I am more aware of what it takes to be on that journey now. I am more aware of me. And last year, I finally got to the place where I told myself that I loved myself Mm -hmm. and I started behaving that way and other people started responding to me in that way as well. So it's been one of the hardest things I've ever done. If I had known it would be like this, I can't say I would have chosen it, but having done it and being at this point and realizing that this is just the journey, it is, there is no destination even I believe, even when when we pass from this physical existence, like there's something else, um, and that you just continue learning and living. But the one crucial thing is love at the base, the center um, of all of that. Because without that one part, I wouldn't still be here. I wouldn't have the relationship that I have with my kids. I wouldn't have the friends that I have now, and I wouldn't be able to show up and lead in the way that I have. I could listen to you talk all day. (laughs) I'm sure I'm not the only one who's ever said that. (laughs) That's amazing. Thank you. You know, um, the interesting thing, so uh, years ago, I was just looking at the time, so we have three minutes, but... um, Years ago, back in like 2014, I met Nancy when she was the CIO of, of I was going to say Mutual of Omaha. Honey, I still think let, we let me have that I cash. love that place. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> CIO of Boys and Girls Club of the Midlands. And um, I just remember feeling like instantly connected to her. And we've been, I think, close friends ever since. Yes. Where I was like, how do I not know her? And, you know. I, I felt the same. Yes. And anyway, I've just really appreciated having you in my life. So thank you for being you. And also proud of your journey. It's so interesting because from the outside looking in, it appeared to me that all of those things were solved. I'm like, she's like checked all the boxes and she's someone I'm emulating and all of that. So it's really interesting for all of us as leaders, especially women, when um, we don't understand like the perception of others when we're still doing that work. But to also celebrate that because we're, like you said, we're on a forever journey. It won't end. Ever. We'll die. I mean, that's just another step. Exactly. But it's a forever journey. It so, is. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. For our listeners who don't know enough about No More Empty Pots yet, what are you up to and how can they help support you? Oh, my goodness. So, uh, I have this thing of overcommitting and <laughs> I have big ideas and people don't tell me no. And when they do tell me no, I feel like I have to prove them wrong. So (laughs) I keep getting myself into things. Um, So right now, uh, the organization is in year 13. I am in year seven of serving as a CEO, uh, but 13 in existence. And we um, are starting our, I think is fourth year with everything being finished in this place we call a food hub on North 30th Street in Florence has four certified commercial kitchens, a rooftop garden, cafe, uh, storage space, uh, incubator room space. We do culinary training program as part of workforce development. We do nutrition education and gardening education from prenatal to seniors. Uh, We um, support entrepreneurs uh, who want to start or grow food businesses. uh, And what else do we do? Um, That's... That's that's the big part in a nutshell. Um, we entered into an agreement with 75 North in 21 uh, to uh, renovate the greenhouse space uh, that is on their campus uh, at Highlander. Um, and the agreement was they would do the fundraising because I don't raise money for things that don't show up on my balance sheet. Uh, and uh, we would bring the programming. I thought it would take them longer, uh, but Sydney is a badass at what she does. So she came back real quick with $5 million. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> yeah, I have to do this. And so renovation has begun. And this is a seven month construction schedule. Uh, and the general contractors are trying to beat their timeline. I'm telling them, please slow down. You don't have to do that. 
But by October, we should have a certificate of occupancy. In December, we will be opening a 20,000 square foot facility wow. uh, with greenhouses, a science lab, uh, certified kitchen with eight stations, classroom, co-working uh, space, conference room, uh, 400 square foot micro market featuring local foods and uh, aggregation space for local foods. Fantastic. So y'all will have to oh, follow Nancy yeah. <laughs> and learn more about this project, October 2023. Yes. Launch. Yes, it's, awesome. we'll get certificate of occupancy, but you'll see us save the date for December 8th. Okay, the grand perfect. Opening. Perfect. Awesome. Right. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.